Hi, hello. Welcome to my review of Ant-Man 3, or Ant-Man and the Wasp 2, or the prequel to Avengers 5. This movie was, uh, was okay, but I will be talking spoilers in a moment here. So, if you have not watched the movie, uh, I'd suggest doing that. If you don't care about spoilers or just have already watched it, uh, let's, let's hear my unhinged rants. Yay! Alright, so first of all, we're going to talk about the Ant-Man gang, the five-man band, if you will. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so Ant-Man, uh, he's definitely not as good as he was in the first two. I thought he was really funny in the first two movies, uh, but in this movie, I think they tried to take him a bit more seriously, which, uh, come on, it's Ant-Man we're talking about here. His whole thing is that he grows and shrinks. It's nothing to be taken seriously. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, they didn't take him too seriously. He was definitely still a fun character, still my favorite of the of the bunch. But I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities with him, and especially Cassie. So we'll, I'll get into that when I'm talking about her. Next up, we got the Wasp. You know, for a movie called Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, I kind of forgot the Wasp was in this movie. Uh, she did like nothing. Well, it's a lie. She saved Scott at the end, and then got her mom to talk, but, like, that was, like, two moments. She didn't really do much, other than bring a new haircut to the to the movie, so uh, that, was, that was cool, I guess. Uh, I feel like they could have done more with the Wasp, considering she's literally in the title of the movie, but okay. Next up, we got Janet and Hank. Uh, I also don't really think Hank did that much in the movie, either. He kind of just talked to his aunts, and then they were, like, robots, and he's like, oh, cool, yay. Uh, so that happens, so he didn't really do much, but... And then Janet is the the one that people are kind of like, oh, she should have told them about the quantum stuff, which, like, I don't think... Uh, she had PTSD, I think that, uh... I think that she was right not to say anything, because she didn't want to tell, like, say anything. That's realistic, I feel like. Y you know, until you think about, oh, wait, Ant-Man and the Wasp, we literally sent the, like, the first Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, or the second Ant-Man movie. It's hard for how they could, they, they do the titles. But in that movie, she sent Scott to the Quantum Realm. And then this, she's, like, all afraid to even go near it. Huh? Th did they forget about the... The, the post credit scene, I don't know. It wasn't really that big of a deal with the movie, though, so... I don't know. And then we get to Cassie, the new Ant-Man, yay! Uh, I think there was a lot of mispotential with Cassie here. Now, I think that she was a fine character. Nowhere near as good as her dad, but she was still fun, I guess. She's still my second favorite of the, the bunch, I would say. Um, but there was a lot of missed opportunities here that I've seen a few people point out. Because they posed an interesting conflict between uh, Scott and Cassie, where Scott really wants to protect uh, Cassie because he doesn't want to lose her again, and then Cassie just wants to like protect everyone and feels like Scott's not doing enough. It's a very interesting conflict that they they do so much with in this movie. I'm so happy they did so much with this in this movie, like like the time they. Yeah, th that's how much they did with that in this movie. It was amazing. Okay, so truth be told, I didn't really think that they did enough with the um, the conflict uh, between these two. It was very well set up, but I don't think it had any payoff at all because they didn't really give any time to it. I feel like with a bit more time in the oven, it could have been done a lot better, I think. But that's just what I think. Now let's talk about the good bad guy, Kang. Kang is easily the best part about this movie. Kang is a very fun villain. I give a lot of props to Jonathan Majors. He's a very good actor. Uh, the only issue I have with Kang is that I feel like we don't get enough of his character here. Because it's very clear that this is meant to be the prequel to Avengers 5. Or, you know, the Kang Dynasty. But, it, 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 but it, like, it's an Ant-Man movie. <laughs> I feel like he doesn't belong. Uh, but I don't know, I, he's still fun though, I, I definitely still think he's fun. No Thanos, but I'd, I'd still say he's pretty good as a villain. But let's say he's not good as a villain, 
our good friends, the the the, the Modok, the Modok man. Let's go. All right. The the guy from Shark Boy and Lava Girl makes a cameo in this movie. I I cannot believe it. Okay, Modok is one of the worst MCU villains I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, okay, so Modok isn't that bad, but he is pretty bad. It's I think he just took too much away from Kang. Where, like, Modok was trying to be, like, set up as, like, this really big comic relief character, while, like, also tying him to Yellow Jacket from the first movie. Which, which, like, I, I get what they were going for here, but it's just, it looked ridiculous. It looked ridiculous. I could not take him seriously at all. And then when he was, the, his big uh, emotional climax moment, where he's like, I'm not a dick, I'm not a dick. And I was like, what? <laughs> I will say that last scene with him before he, uh, before he perished was funny. Uh, it was funny, it was kind of weird, but it was funny, I guess, so... I don't know, I feel like more time should have been focused on Kang, or... It really should have been focused on Scott and Cassie more, I think, but whatever. Uh, my fix, my biggest fix for this movie, take MODOK out of it completely. I don't even think Modok should have been in the MCU. I think he's a ridiculous villain. It was fun for the comics, but like, it's he's too hard to do for the MCU. And they they did him, and oh look at that, it wasn't very good. I don't know. Modok's an interesting case, but now let's go on to some of my more looser thoughts. These are more rapid fire thoughts. The Blob guy was fun. He was marketable, I guess, to so Disney can sell toys. I, I don't know. He was fine. Probably my favorite character in the movie. I, I don't know. The CGI was... It, it was better than the She-Hulk, I'll give it that. And, and Thor, and and Miss Marvel, and Moon Knight, and... It was better than most things. Uh, the CGI was really bad whenever it was with MODOK, but then again, I, I don't know how it could have been good, because again, I don't think MODOK should have been here at all. But, um, I will give it props that the CGI does look pretty good at some bits. Um, they're way better than most Phase 4 stuff. Uh, is that a step in the right direction? Maybe, but... D Disney should give their uh, they give their CGI animators a little break, I would say, because uh, yeah. All right, and now my biggest issue with this movie that's not Modok related. What happened to the X Cons? They were my favorite characters. What happened to them? I love Luis. I love the other ones. They're funny. They're fun. What happened to them? They're just they weren't even mentioned in this movie. Look, they weren't even mentioned. What happened to them? I don't know, but it was a huge injustice. Like, like after the movie, me and my dad were were talking, and he was like, they could have just had one scene where, like, so, I don't know, they could have just had one scene. Maybe Scott could have been asking about, like, uh, what happened in the five years, and then, like, it, it looks like they're gonna set up, like, a big thing where he's gonna, like, recap everything like he did in the other movies, but then he just says, yeah, not really much. Then that would have been really funny, and then like, oh, yeah, it's, it's it's him, it's it's the guy who does the, the who does the voice, but they didn't even use him at all. I I was very sad about that. Luis was my favorite Ant Man character, and they did not use him. The world's building was fine. I really like world's building in movies and stuff. It's part of the reason why I really like Star Wars. Is I just really like the world building. And this movie sure did feel like Star Wars. It's not a bad thing. I like Star Wars, like I just said. I feel like it was different enough where, like, it was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, I like, I do like the world building here. Some things could have been more fleshed out, I think. Like, um, like some of the societies, it was kind of black and white. Like, there was the evil empire and the rebellion. I feel like there could have been, like, maybe show some of the people in between. It's kind of like some, so sometimes Star Wars does that, where like it shows the people in between the conflicts. But then again, uh, this movie wasn't really focused on the world building, so I, I get it. Now, my personal ranking of this movie, I give it a 6 out of 10. 
uh, because, and I'm being a little bit generous here, but I, I still do like a lot of the Kang stuff. So, and that's why I bumped it up. And, like I said, the main characters aren't the worst in the world. I wish they did more with, uh, Janet, Hank, and, uh, and, and Hope. I, I was about to say Janet again. <laughs> but yeah, I wish they did more with them. But even, and also I just, there was such a missed opportunity with Scott and Cassie. But, oh well. <laughs> It was it's still an enjoyable movie. I'd watch it again. I did not expect to go into this movie thinking it was that good. But I would go into it again, honestly. It was not a very bad movie. I would watch it again. Like I've been saying for the past three times. Uh, where does this rank in Phase 5? Well, it's the best movie of Phase 5. It's also the only one. <laughs> Alright. Check out my letterbox. Uh, it's a it's a website where you can like review movies and stuff. I make really stupid reviews, but they're funny, so check it out. I'm bread underscore enjoyer. All right, bye.